Hey everybody! Today on Bella Ranavari, we are going to be making over this cute little entryway table. There's also a mirror that goes with it. I'll be using the No Silk Mineral Paint line to make this over. It's going to be a super simple one color. I may do some white wax. If you want to see me transform this little entryway table into almost like a little statement piece, stay tuned. Okay, if you guys are new here, if you're new here, my name is Cristana, I am a furniture artist. I redo a bunch of furniture. I don't know if I have a style, I really like color, but this is going to be a little bit different than some of the stuff I do. Normally I do a lot of artistic finishes, some blending, things like that, but I did want to bring it back a little bit. One, I want to try out the new Silk Line by Dixie Bell. It's a mineral paint. It's totally different than their original line. So you gotta go into it thinking totally different paint. It's a mineral paint, so it's really good for one color finishes. It You can blend it, but it's, it doesn't really like water like some of your chalk paints and your clay-based paints. Those ones are really great for blending because they like water, whereas the mineral paints, not so much they don't like the water. You can blend with them, but it's not something that I enjoy. <laughs> so, um, but this piece right here, it is solid wood, but it has got a bad paint job on it. Like bad, bad, bad. I do know that some people, they do not like to pick up already painted pieces because they're not sure, you know, stripping it off is time consuming. But when you're doing custom work, sometimes you don't have a choice of whether or not you can strip it off or not. I mean, you can choose you can choose your customs, but when you have to put food on the table, you all you don't always have the luxury of, no, I don't wanna take that piece because it's already painted. So, this is a latex type paint. I am gonna use a stripper on it. Disclaimer, I do sometimes use a heat gun to strip pieces of furniture, but this one, you know, with it being latex, I thought, okay, I'm gonna take my heat gun to it really quick and kind of test it. No, it was not coming off super easy. So I was, I already tested it. So if you guys tell me, take heat gun to it, it was not doing what I wanted to do. It's not bubbling up like other paints normally do. So I think a stripper is probably in order. I don't want to sand it because I, I think it's going to go through too much sandpaper being the kind of paint it is. It's going to gum it up. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. It's pretty rough. So we're going to strip this all the way down because if I paint over this with some of these imperfections, it's not, if you paint over a bad paint job, it's not gonna fix a bad paint job. I don't know if that makes sense. If you have an awful paint job underneath, if you paint over it, no matter what kind of paint you use, it's still gonna show. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. So really, the best thing to do for this is to strip it down. Super easy, guys. Just take your favorite stripper. Again, if you guys have watched a video of mine a couple weeks ago, I stripped my daughter's dresser down I do live in Germany, so I use the stripper that's here. You guys can use whatever you want. I asked people to put their favorite. A lot of people really like the um, citrus strip. I know in the States they just came out. I have lived here for a year and a half, but before I had moved, they had changed all the rules as far as what kind of chemicals could go in strippers. So they're not quite as strong as they used to be a couple of years ago, but they're still obviously good enough. So. That's my plan of attack here is to actually strip it. So I'm gonna just put some stripper on there. I'm actually gonna go in my garage. It's a little bit warmer in there and it's raining out. So I'm gonna go in my garage. My last piece, I put some saran wrap on top of it and let it sit. I'm not gonna do that with this piece. We're just going to put it on there and let it sit on its own. It will be inside. I do put saran wrap. I like to put saran wrap on it depending you know, if it's outside and that way it doesn't dry up too much with the air. Sometimes I don't put it on there. So this one, we're not gonna put it on there. Okay, I digress, I've talked too much. I am gonna show you what this finish looks like right now and really why it's so important for us to strip this off. You can see on this piece, that's where I tried to strip it with my heat gun, but we're gonna get a little bit closer. There was a bristle from the brush right there and you can see that there's not full coverage and then down right here there's some drips and there's streaks so like I had told you guys before no paint no matter what it is is going to go over this and fix this finish so really the most proper thing to do is either sand it all down smooth or strip that existing finish off 
I was not a big fan of this applique, and so I just removed it. What I did is took a flathead screwdriver, took my hammer, and I went around carefully so that I could peel it away because I just, I just I don't like that applique. I took this piece down to my garage and what I do is I make sure I have gloves on and I pour the stripper into a separate plastic container. I use a cheap chip brush and I go over the surface. I do a nice thick coat and then I let it sit for about 30 minutes. You can see right here that the paint is actually starting to crinkle and bubble up. That is what we want to see. So after that, what I do is I just take my plastic scraper and I scrape across because it is super satisfying to watch this. I, it's, it comes off, it, this came off very, very easy, much easier than it did with the heat gun. Once I'm done using my plastic scraper, I take a very fine steel wool and I go over the area again. And that way I can get any kind of residual paint off and it kind of acts as getting all those little nooks and crannies, things like that. So I go over it with that steel wool. After I have stripped down the entire piece, I need to neutralize it. So what I do is I take another piece of steel wool and I dip it in mineral spirits and I go ahead and rub over it so that I can get, I neutralize it, get the excess stripper off, get any kind of excess paint off. And then after I go over it and scrub it, I go over it with a microfiber cloth to get all the excess water off and then it is stripped down. So then the next step is to just allow it to dry, allow the wood to fully dry. After your wood has dried, you want to go ahead and take a sander to it. So I'm using my Surf Prep 3x4 electric ray and I'm using a fine sanding pad. So you'll wanna use probably about a 120 to 220 grit to sand off the excess paint, things like that, smooth out the surface before you actually go over it with some paint. If you remember, we took that applique off the front and there were nails. So what I'm doing is I'm actually setting those nails to push them back and that way I have a smooth surface. But because I'm setting those nails, there may be indents right there. So I'm going to take my Dixie Mud by Dixie Bell in brown and I'm going to just go over those areas to fill in that those holes where I had set that to smooth it out. Once it's dry, I'm going to sand it down with a probably about a 220 grit you want to use just to smooth it and then it'll be ready for paint at that point. Before we paint, I'm actually going to add a Would You Bend molding on here. So Would You Bend moldings are actually made of wood. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to heat it up first. So that way it lays flat on your surface and you can kind of visualize what it's going to look like. Because even though it looks flat, it's not. So you're going to heat it up with a heat gun or a hair dryer, see how it bends. 
And so then you're going to heat it up and you're going to put it on your surface to ensure that it's flat. Then after you heat it up and put it on your surface to ensure it's flat, you're going to want to use a wood glue to adhere it to your surface. So right here I'm using a tight bond wood glue. You can use your favorite wood glue. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the back of the applique and then I'm going to spread it out all the way to the edges with my fingers so that way I know that it's completely covered with the wood glue. And then I'm going to actually put it onto the surface. You're going to reheat it one more time to ensure that you can push it flat and make sure everything's flush. When you do that, you're going to probably see that there's gonna be some glue that comes out. Just wipe it off with a paper towel. So, and then that's it. You can tape it if you want to secure it in place, but this stayed and I didn't need to tape it. So now we're gonna paint this with the Silk All-in-One Mineral Paint in Serenity. This paint has a built-in top coat, a built-in primer, it's UV resistant, mildew resistant, water resistant, and it's a mineral paint. So it's not a chalk paint, it's a mineral paint. And so this is really, really good for one color surfaces, smooth finishes. You don't wanna overwork your paint. I start with a dry synthetic paintbrush and I try to work in long strokes. I don't overwork it and it just has a really beautiful finish. It's almost like a satin when you're done with it. It's just really, really pretty. The coverage on this paint is amazing, but I am a creature of habit, and so I'm just gonna go ahead and put a second coat down. You wanna wait for it to fully dry, wait a few hours, and then you can put your second coat down. After I did my second coat and it dried, I was looking at the piece and I just felt like it was missing something. So I added a couple more Would You Bend moldings on here. While I was waiting for the glue to dry on the moldings so that I could paint over them, I just distressed it. So you'd probably want to take about a 120 grit and you want to distress this paint. It distresses really, really beautiful. So that's what I did. And I'm using a sanding sponge for this, but I wanted some distress on here and it was just really easy to distress. So also, if you want, you don't have to do this. I wanted to smooth the top out as much as I could. And so I just took a fan, fine sanding pad and I just went over it very lightly just to smooth out the surface even more. And it just really made it almost like glass. It's just really pretty. You don't have to do this, but I did. Once my glue was dry, I went over the appliques with more paint. You just do thin layers and kind of brush it to smooth it out and it will look perfect with the pre-existing painted finish. This paint does not require a top coat, but I wanted to put a little bit of a white wax into the appliques and just kind of add a little bit more character, almost kind of a whitewash feel to it. I am using Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in white and I'm just applying this in thin, thin layers over an area. So I'm just working in one area right now to show you, 
But what I do is I, I apply it and then I take a shop towel and I wipe over it. And that way I can pull it back, but it has a whitewash look to it. I do wait 24 hours after my paint has dried to wax it or glaze it or anything. That way I don't run the risk of pulling my paint back too or by putting something on it too early. All right, everybody, so this piece is done. That was easy peasy, really easy for beginners. I really enjoyed using the silk line. I think it's gonna be really, really popular in the US once it comes to the US. It is in Australia, New Zealand, and the UK and e the EU right now. Um, it is not in the US. It will be in the US hopefully at the beginning of 2021. But if you guys are using a different paint line or you're using the original line, a vintage duck egg, is what's very similar to this color. So if you like this makeover right here, you're going to want to get a vintage duck egg color. Again, I'll put the link in the description below. You can, again, remember this is Serenity and the new silk line. And so if you are located in one of the areas that I said it is in, that's the color that you wanna get. If you are not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. Don't give me a thumbs down. <laughs> Okay, fine, give me a thumbs down if you want. But uh, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, put a comment down below, tell me what you think about this. I feel like this is easy enough. Also, the Would You Bend moldings are available all throughout the world, so I'm gonna put the website and you can find a local retailer to get some Would You Bend moldings. They're all super easy to use. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Happy creating, and I'll see you next Friday. Bye. Just another sunny day.